Right, so my technique for drawing the S, I'm going to get it nice and big, and instead of working with a line, I'm actually going to work with a fill. I'm just going to swap it over, and I'm going to change the colour. The reason I'm doing that is because when I, I find that when I draw with a line, the width of the line actually obscures the nature of the drawing underneath, because my drawings are rather soft and sort of fluffy like that, multiple line strokes of the pencil, I need to make an executive decision about where I'm actually going to put the path, because the path itself has no width. So I use a fill, and then I can see the edge of the path. The second thing I'm going to do is decide whether I'm going to go in a clockwise direction or an anti-clockwise direction. I usually work in a clockwise direction, but that's up to you. And the third thing I'm going to do is figure out a starting point. It's normally easier to start with um, some form of corner point. So here's a nice one that I'm going to start with, but that would do, or that would do. Or you could start on one of these. It does get slightly more tricky if you have to start on a curve, because then you have to think of how you're going to come back in and join up with that curve on the other end of the loop. So I'm going to start here with a single click, and then we've got a line that needs to come down to here. It needs to be perfectly vertical, so I'm going to hold shift and click again. I'm going to hold shift and click again here to get a perfectly horizontal line. And you can see that my shape is starting to build up. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do this next part. I'm going to go all the way around reasonably fast, and then I'm going to come back and explain how I did it. So I'm going to click and drag, click and drag, click and drag, click and drag, single click, hold shift, single click. I can't see what I'm doing because this pink has suddenly obscured everything. It's not looking very good so far. Bear with me, it'll get better. I'm going to go over to my transparency palette and just knock it down to 50%. This is just a temporary colour, just to get the shape right. Illustrator's great, you can change the colour of stuff later. So that was a single click with shift held. Click and drag. Click and drag. Click and drag. Click and drag. And then a single click to join up the path. So I've got a closed path, but you probably think I'm mad because that looks nothing like the beautiful soft curves of the S underneath. How do I fix it and what on earth was I doing? Well, I'm going to turn off the pink layer for a minute and grab a new layer to explain why I put those points where I did. It's a common misconception that a lot of my students make is to do this. And I say Use the Bezier curve so I get maybe this out of them. Sort of like nibbling away at it. And the end result is this mucky, murky, bumpy line. And no matter how careful you are, you're going to get these problems if you use heaps and heaps and heaps of anchor points. It's not the way to go. What you want to aim for is the fewest number of anchor points. So to demonstrate where to put them, I'm just going to grab the line tool and change it over so I've just got a stroke colour of pink. And you want to look for what are called extrema points. So these are points that hit either a ceiling, so we'd probably put one about there. There's another ceiling there. Oops. Or a wall where your artwork it's a wall. So ceilings by their nature are, or well, most of the time they are flat, they are horizontal. Walls are normally vertical. So that's the type of wall we're using, a conventional wall. And the little cross pieces I'm drawing here, just to give you an indication of where I think the middle of where it hits the wall is, so that'll be a good place to draw the point. The softer the curve, the less vital that positioning is. This curve is a lot more sharp than this underneath one here, so this one will need to be placed a little bit more carefully. But that gives you an idea of where good point placement would be. 
to get extrema points. So extrema points are sitting against a ceiling, a wall, or a floor. I'm just going to turn this layer off and turn my pink layer back on. And if I click on this, we can see that that is indeed pretty much where I've placed those points. It still doesn't look right though. We still need to go back and do some fixing up to get the actual curve to behave itself. So let's do that. I've pushed A to get the white arrow tool and there's the first one. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see what's happening. And with the white arrow tool I'm going to start pulling this handle in and I'm going to hold shift to keep it flat and get the first sort of chunk of that curve sitting nicely on the sketch underneath. Select the next point so I can see the handle. Pull it down, hold shift to keep it vertical. And I'm looking to keep the line sitting nicely against the sketch, sort of about halfway. I'm going to zoom out now. Because the line then switches back, and it's like an S curve from here down to here. So this anchor point down here also has a handle which is interacting with this line. And I need this handle here to go up higher. So when this one goes up higher, this one might need to come down lower. And that's all part of the fun. You have to play around and figure out where the actual pink line should be versus where the sketch underneath is. So if a handle is not showing up, you can click on the anchor point and it will display the handles. So I'm just shortening this handle and that's making the curve sort of sharper. The longer the handle, the softer the curve. So here that curve is too sharp, it's too straight. Display the handle, make the curve longer and softer. Click on the anchor point with the white arrow tool, make the curve shorter and sharper. So this one here is a bit tricky because although it seems to follow the shape of the sketch underneath quite nicely, it's quite, it, it goes sort of soft and then quite sharp. So it's quite, quite a direct angle there, which I don't like. So I'm going to just pull that up a bit. Maybe even it might be wise actually to move this whole point down a bit. That way I can still pull this up to get that first part of the curve looking nice. And then I can use this one over here to pull this one down and get a smoother curve. Pull this one out to make that match. Let's zoom out, let's turn off the layer underneath, see how we did. It's better. Much better. So that's a really simple technique. Once you get the hang of that, it is actually very quick. To prove that, I'll do the R. You can tell I already quite like the R. Knock the transparency down. So there's another technique I want to show you. I've just finished a curve here. That handle is making that curve. And if I want to go straight down here, I'd hold shift and click and I don't get a straight line. How do I get a straight line? If I just go Command Z and undo, I can see that I've got a handle here showing me what the future of the line segment will be like. It will be curved. It will be trying to get towards that handle there. I need to get rid of this handle. We just click on the point, 
the handle goes away, I can hold shift and click and continue on my way around the shape. So anytime I'm drawing a curve, I'm usually holding shift to get the nice 90 degree angle happening there. Oops. Click then hold shift. I want to get rid of this forward facing point. And close it up. So that was quite quick. It was a lot quicker than this one over here. I've got a little problem up here. Another little tip for you. I need this to be perfectly vertical and you can see that it's not. Um, so this is the width that I want the shape to be and this bit here it goes too far to the left. I need to bring this back. You could just hold shift and kind of like try and drag it and make the line straight but I find that more often than not that is fraught with peril. It doesn't work. You can get the computer to do it. If you get your transform palette up you can get it under the window menu and choosing transform or shift F8. I think that's the keyboard shortcut. Get the transform palette up. Select the um, anchor point that is at the space that you want. So you want to line it up to this one. Select, so select the one that's right. Go to the transform palette. Now if you want to move something left or right you use the X value. If you want to move something up and down you use the Y value. So here we're looking at um, moving something left or right, so we're going to use the X value. So I click in there, choose Command A to select everything in that box, choose Command C to copy it, then I'm going to select the other anchor point, go back to the X value box, again select Command A to select everything, this time Command V to paste over it, and then push Enter. Perfect, lovely and vertical. So that's just a good little trick for perfectly aligning points. I hope this has been a helpful tutorial for you for how to use the pen tool. Thanks for watching.